Welcome back to Sahara TV. My name is Rudolf Okonkwo. I hope you've been enjoying our show today. Um, we want to use this opportunity to wish you all at home a very happy Easter. This is our feedback section when we give you the chance to give us feedback on some of the things we've been talking about. We had an interview with uh, the representative of the Nigerian Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs at the national conference and he had the opportunity to talk about the situation of the country and what's going on at the conference. We also spoke to people who had a different story uh, around the nurse uh, who went to Ghana and was arrested. I hope you enjoyed that too. Um, so we're going to go straight to our Skype callers. Today we are going to discuss the mobbing that took place in Abuja on Monday and the kidnapping of uh, the school kids in Borono State. Of course, joining us are uh, our usual uh, Skype callers. From Switzerland, we have Hansen. Hansen, welcome to Sahara TV. Thanks so much, Rudolf. Okay, from Canada, we have Collegeo. Collegeo, welcome to Sahara TV. Also from Canada, we have Yemi. Yemi, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you. And then from India, we have Michael. Michael, welcome to Sahara TV. Yeah, thank you, Rodolf. All right. So let me start with you, Hansen. Uh, this week has not been a wonderful week for Nigeria. Uh, what is your, your take on the fact that Boko Haram once again took the fight into Abuja? It's, uh, it's very shameful. It's very shameful. It's very painful. Uh, it's what I was discussing with uh, Yemi before we start this show. Actually, these things like this makes one not to be proud of coming from Nigeria. So we know uh, amounts that the uh, federal government budgeted for um, for security. But um, we don't know if really those money are fully implemented or not, if they use the money or not. But uh, I remember last time when Good Lord Jonathan was saying that uh, they have chased Boko Haram's away from Abuja to the fringes. But okay. it shows that uh, what happened some days ago shows that it's not true. They're still around. You know, it's it's painful. It's painful. It's good, uh, 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 good luck. I mean, uh, Rudolph. <laughs> no pun intended. All right. Call it Joe. <clears throat> Let me ask you... Um, so today we're asking people a question. We're saying uh, the Nigerian government and the military have they lost control of the security situation in the country. Even the idea of that question makes me cr cringe in the, in the sense that is it just when we have an attack in Abuja that we now feel that things are out of control? Um, what is your take on, on what happened this week? Yeah, that, uh, that was if you look at it this way, that's that's a very good question because since this uh, since the bombing started or whatever, they have been bombing the north. The global media do, they don't report the bombing the north. They only report when it's like in in, in the in the capital or maybe somewhere else. So and again, it makes me question where how much do we actually budget for national security? Are we are we actually using this money? And again, just to correct, you said Boko Haram. They have not yet come out say that no no they did in the last few uh, in the last few hours about six hours ago they came out to say they were the one they were the one okay uh, yeah. okay then, then you know and again the problem again is i think the if you look at the president himself when he visited the the, the scene he's confused so this man is confused at this point he's, he doesn't know what to do anymore and he needs he needs a cooperation both the opposition party and those the, pre the president party now, they need to cooperate. That is the only way we can solve this national issue, uh, national security issue, mm. we putting us right now. Yeah, because I I don't know whether it's true the APC party refused to go or they, maybe they were not invited according to the uh, governor Pobio. I don't know how true is that, but we need to cooperate. Just that's the only way we can we can we can get these guys out. 
Okay. Uh, okay. Yemi, I want you to address the political, the politicalization of national security, which is what uh, Collegio was referring to. The idea that um, you find the PDP accusing the APC of sponsoring uh, um, terror, sort, sort of. You find APC saying that they are going to sue PDP for saying that. What is going on? If a country is under attack, shouldn't the political class come together and do something? Yeah, um, Rudolph, thank you very much for having me. And um, I, I just want to send out, uh, first send out my condolences to all those that lost uh, their loved ones in the Abuja bombing. It's, I have a sister that lives in Abuja, and uh, that morning I just had to call her quickly and make sure she's all right. It's very sad that we find ourselves in this situation. And uh, politicizing this is just shows you the kind of leadership we have. Um, apparently, uh, immediately uh, that bomb blast uh, occurred. Uh, APC, like any other opposition party would do, they, they used that opportunity to hit them hard. And um, the response uh, PDP had was APC were the one that caused the bomb blast, that they are behind the bomb blast. So it, it's, we don't need the rocket science. It's not really, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not something, even common secondary school guy would know what's going on in Nigeria that we have a, a, a leadership that doesn't know how to curtail uh, the Boko threat, even though they have all the security apparatus, all the funding, they've been funding this, uh, the, the, the military. And I heard, I read one article that, that titled that uh, some soldiers are, you know, um, saying that the, the leadership or the security leadership are embezzling that money. And I watched uh, several uh, security experts, private security experts on Channel TV, that they've proposed different kind of uh, ways of attacking uh, Boko Haram, but this government doesn't listen. So, so it's really, really, really sad. And I wish uh, PDP, APC, respective of religion and tribe, should come together and um, solve this together. Michael, uh, in India. Michael, one of the issues... No? We don't have Michael? Okay. All right, Michael, I understand we lost Michael. Okay, Hanson, I'll come to you again. Uh, one of the issues um, that came up this week was the issue of uh, the reaction of the president. Initially, he went to the site and visited people in the hospital, but um, he, uh, eventually, the next day, he went back to campaign mode, and he went to Kano where he attacked the Kano state governor. Um, and he was also seen dancing. Some people felt it was inappropriate, considering what happened the day before. What is your take on the president's um, reaction the day after? Um, OK, first of all, um, Rudolph, I'm sorry for calling you good luck. I made a mistake, only because you look like good luck. That's why sometimes you know, I mean, I'm mistaking you with good luck, Jonathan. Anyway. <laughs> Look at the situation is that, number one, I think it's wrong, okay, in that kind of situation for the opposition party to attack the ruling party the way they did. It's absolutely wrong. Just imagine something like that happened in America. Uh, the uh, Republicans will never, at that moment, attack um, uh, Democrats. They will wait. You got the point. So opposition party, they got it wrong. Second, you need to think, you need to, we need to, uh, first of all, think how Boko Haram started. After the election, 2011 election, some people say that they will make Nigeria ungovernable. You got the point. And some of these people that made that statement, they are the ones that jogging, okay, to take up the leadership of, leadership of APC to contest for presidency in 2015. That one apart. Now, back to the question that you asked me, I believe that it's wrong after the, after the bombing for good luck, Jonathan, going, going, uh, the next day going to campaign. That is not the right thing to do. He's supposed to stay back, you know, talk to his uh, uh, security apparatus to know how to, you know, 
bring this uh, uh, evil act uh, in order and know how to help the people that uh, um, hurt during the during the bomb blast. All right. Okay, Michael, I understand that you're back. Can you please turn down the volume of your computer? Okay. All right. So, okay, thank you so much, Hanson. Let me com come to you, Michael. I also understand that there's a new caller, Abby, in Texas. Are you with us? Yeah, I'm with you guys. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. I'll come to you next. So, Michael, uh, looking at this from India, I wanted to know um, w the reaction, because in India also you have uh, political and other kind of uh, violence going on. Uh, how do politicians in India handle something like this? Uh, well, uh, right now we're having uh, the national election uh, presently in India, so it's been very calm. I can tell you uh, so far there's been no problem. In fact, the election is up to a week now, and uh, everything has been very, very calm. In fact, I wish that could happen back home, seriously. However, uh, the issue of insecurity in Nigeria, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, quite pathetic and quite uh, unbelievable that my dear president could go for a rally the next day after the bombing. Um, if you remember, Rudolph, after the attack in Kenya Mall, the entire Kenya declared, I think, uh, more than one day a uh, memorial for the people who lost their lives. Not even up to this, uh, many people who lost their own lives and who have been, you know, people who have been losing their lives in, 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 in you know, subsequent attack, it, it shows a, a kind of lackadaisic attitude on the part of the government. We, it's like they don't even value these lives. There is no value for life. If my president could go for campaign the next day after a massive bomb explosion in the capital of the nation, then that shows that they don't really care about us. They don't really care if we exist or not, as long as none of their family member is involved. Believe me, if any member of their family is involved in this kind of attacks, then they will call for a, a, a one-day money or two-day money. But because they're not directly affected, it doesn't concern them. And that's why I think I think the issue of insecurity in Nigeria, as someone said today, that the, 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 the government and the people in power, they don't know that, that the people are not secure because they carry huge bodyguards, they have a bulletproof cars, and they feel that they're secured. So uh, in, in this kind of situation, I, in fact, personally, I am fed up because I cannot continue to read these kind of things about our leaders. I think we need a change. We need young people. We, we don't need old people again there. We need people with vision. Uh, Thank you. Good luck is confused. Good luck is confused. It doesn't know the next thing to do. We need people with conviction and vision. Right now, we don't have a single one. Okonje Wiala, I thought she would be the one. Unfortunately, she's been a mess up. I can't say more about any other person. I can vouch for anybody. Those who have been there and those who will come there. I just believe that if we, those young minds, could just reason together and come up with someone who can do something, we can make this country a better place. But as per Gula Jonathan, he is confused. He is confused. He doesn't know what to do next. Rudolf, please help him if you can. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> Let me come to you, Abby, in, in Texas. Watching all this uh, from, from Texas, what is your impression uh, on the government of uh, Nigeria and the, the whole political class? Well, quite all right. The, the government have failed the masses, if I may use that word. And uh, they have never showed any fact in terms in respect of the citizen aspect of it. And secondly, in, respect, in the plight of uh, Boko Haram part, it has gone beyond Nigeria. Nigeria alone cannot handle that issue. Because when you look at it, it depends on those, part, those side that they have those borders. Definitely, all of them have to what, come as have that one mind of belazing in question. Then the other part, again, I think the, this one is, has to do with what, the police force if they are honest to themselves. They can bring them, they can deploy them into the cities of those northern parts, then allow the soldiers to go on those boundaries parts. That particular one can go on. Then in the other part, they get the government part. Uh -oh. The government part, the, 
this one you see that this one have their own government uh, chairman of government forum. The other one have his own chairman of government forum. Before it was not like that, because one the the, the corruption are pity them deep. They don't even know on what they are called to do. They just looked at it that it's all about the money. Politics have gone beyond that. Nigerians should learn a lot from that part of it. Not all about money. Nobody can stand up tomorrow to stand as as Nigerian Nelson Mandela. It's a disgrace. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, College Joe, let me ask you. There's another em embarrassing thing that happened this week, which was uh, the reaction of the military to the kidnapping of those school kids. Um, they, were, they were quick to issue a statement saying that the kids have been um, recovered when it turned out that the kids who have not been, they have not been recovered. The number of people that were reporting uh, that they recovered were, were not the exact number. And most of them escaped on their own, the kids, and they were not actually rescued by the military. So um, what is your take on that? Does that go further to discredit um, our efforts at fighting uh, Boko Haram? You know, Rudolph, the, thank you for that question. The, the point we're getting here is uh, uh, the, last, the last speaker made a very big point. This case is on us. It's not something we can really do. If I ask anyone on this forum, if you if you were or if you are if you were to be the president, what will you do now? Because right right now there is no as I said before there is no unification of every party coming together to solve this problem. It's it's a, it's a massive problem for the guy. For, I'm not supporting him, but looking at looking at the way it is now, what will you do? He has our ministry is not that. Should we ask for external help? These are the questions that will be running around this guy's mind now. Because trust me, you, we may think it's easy as we think to get rid of this uh, terrorist group like that. And the last question you have to ask yourself, is this politically motivated? If it's politically motivated, then we cannot solve the issue. Because those behind it will continue till they get what they want. Mm. So any effort to stop them will not even, will not even do anything. So that, that's the way I see it, because I don't see any way. Coming to the question of whether they helped them get the girls, we know they didn't help them. They can't even, you can't, they have not killed one book around before I know of. Mm. So it's just, it's just really sad when, when I look at, when I compare these questions and everything going on. We need external help. We have got to that stage now. All right. Uh, Yemi, Yemi, do we need external help and who will you call? Will you call the Americans to send in troops into Nigeria? Or will you call the Pakistanis? Who do you call? Yeah, yeah. To be sincere, honestly, I think it's something we can fix ourselves. Um, this um, Boko Haram issue is is not something. Um, it looks complex, but um, I think it's something that can be solved if the right stakeholders are being brought on board. Now, uh, Anson said when, when we talked about when it started, and um, we must try and um, go back in history. We know there was a time the president said Boko Haram is part of his government, and we know there was a bombing in the, in Abuja some time back when the president claimed that it wasn't, it, it wasn't Niger Delta, but it was actually Niger Delta. So the problem we have right now, I think the Boko Haram has been able to even infiltrate the military, thereby making it very difficult for the military to even counter uh, the, the Boko Haram. So they, if the proper stakeholders, both APC, uh, PDP, they should come together and form a kind of Delta force, like, like a special force, that's not being filtrated by the Boko Haram, and they should remove politics out of it and attack this holistically with the cooperation of the neighboring um, countries and secure these places. Like what the president said in his uh, media chat, he said uh, they've been able to push Boko Haram to the fringes. Even though he's in the fringes, and is the fringes not part of Nigeria? So, so those people can be dying? So that's the question. I think the presidency themselves 
they are not handling this the way they ought to from the onset. So if it was handled properly from the onset, we won't get to this point. So that's, that's it. If, if they face it holistically, sincerely, and fund it sincerely, not corrupt, because we know all these security votes go there, and uh, it's only 20% of it because of that article. The soldiers that are in the front line, they don't get water, they don't get good accommodation, and you expect them to fight Boko Haram. The ammunition they even have is not as sophisticated as Boko Haram. So I feel it's, it's going to be more productive for them if they come together and move forward as a team to fight Boko Haram. Uh, okay, thank you, Yemi. Uh, My Michael, uh, coming yeah. together of these uh, these political actors, do you see that happening anytime soon? I mean, based on the kind of body language and the kind of attack they are um, exerting on each other, do you see that happening? And if that should not happen, should the government in power be responsible for providing secure ultimately security on on Nigerians, and would they? be able to go to the Nigerian people and say, we can't do this because the opposition is not supporting us. Is that a legitimate uh, question uh, to present to Nigerian people? Thank you, Rodolf. I, I feel um, it's a collective responsibility if we, if we are going to win this battle against this um, terrorist group, the Boko Haram. However, the way the opposition is looking at this, they, they are happy that Boko Haram is threatening the present government, so which will possibly give them an edge in the next coming election. They can use that to campaign, right? Uh, during their administration, there's, there has been so much instability and, and, and social crisis. However, I don't see these two people coming together and working on the issue of Boko Haram. Now, this brings me to these very few questions. First question, do we have an intelligent president? Answer, no. Second question, do we have a well-trained security officers? No. Third question, do we have security infrastructures? No. Why are these things happening in the 21st century? See, to tackle a militant or, 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 or terrorist group, you need, you, need, you need intelligent people, special intelligent people. Believe me, it's not about the, 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 the force itself. Now, it took, it took a, a whole lot before America could capture Osama, right? With the, all of the special intelligence, how will we capture these people if we don't have intelligence in place? Now, look at, look at the issues of these, our military people. Are they well trained? Do they have facilities? Do they have equipment? Do, do, can they read a radar? I mean, these are questions. I say military tactics have gone beyond those days of um, the, 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 mil, uh, the, the behavior wars. This is 21st century. This is, this is a open ground where technology is playing a huge role. To really combat those people, we need infrastructures. We need technology. Now, I have said it many, many times, any country that does not embrace technology or does not uh, uh, improve its technology is liable to social insecurity. See? If we have these infrastructures and technologies in place, we can we can we can really detect where those people are hiding. We can we can uh, our radars can you know can 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 get them, but we are not te technically equipped. Mm -hmm. so, uh, but our communication system. Ah, we should so sure that the, that the military have good communication. They don't. They can't. Believe me, Rudolph, this is a complex security matter has gone beyond uh, the way the government is handling presently. Okay, it's, okay. It's, uh, 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 Michael, thank you. Thank no. you. Now, now uh, <laughs> let me ask you, Abby. Um, if, I'm if, not saying it, you know, Rudolph. Hansen? Okay, I thought yeah. I started with you. I'll come back to you. Abby, let me ask you. If we are facing a situation like uh, Pakistan or Afghanistan, if that is what is on our hands, are we not um, rushing to judgment, thinking that it's going to be stopped tomorrow or next tomorrow in terms of what it's going to take to actually put an end to this? Uh, if you look at the, the Israelis and what it took them to be able to stop uh, suicide bombers from coming into is Israel, essentially they have to wall off uh, the border. Do you think that we are expecting too much too fast from our security people? The the securities are well, they are well trained, they are good. I'll tell you that. The securities are very, very good. 
You mean, you mean Nigeria's security? Yeah, they have, okay. they have a good security on land, quite right. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the fact still remains, the fact still remains when it comes to these kind of issues. Because at the first stage, they, they would have tackled it at the, at the, at the, at the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. But they, they just looked at it that it was just a game is all. It was a child's play. But now it has gone beyond that, whereby they have they have connections with the act. They did not work with the academic aspect of it. Meaning, it now makes the whole thing sound big to us. And on this part of it, they have to join. ECOWAS is not is even above ECOWAS region because those borders have to be sec the secure part is not just Nigeria alone. They have to bring in other countries. That is the only way they can counter this Boko Haram and that sort of thing. For now, All right. they, it, they, no matter how, if you like bringing radars, they won't get any results. All right. That... Thank you. Uh, Hansen, what, is, what do you want to say? So what I want to say is that we should stop eating around the bush. We know the truth. The truth is that Boko Haram started when uh, um, Boko Haram started in a way that... Um, some part of the country believe that they have the right, okay, to uh, to rule Nigeria. So that is the beginning of Boko Haram. So now someone asked the question: If Boko Haram is political, the answer is yes. Boko Haram is political. So the only way Boko Haram will stop is that if 2015, good luck, did not win election, then Boko Haram will stop. That is the truth of the matter. Let us stop it around the bush. All right. Okay. All right. We we have just three minutes left. Uh, you guys have talked um, a lot about Boko Haram. Let me uh, come to each of you and ask you, as we normally do on this program, what is keeping you up at night? And I will reference the national conference going on uh, currently. This week, they were assigned to committees, and there were problems with people accepting the committees they were assigned to. There were complaints about things like not having any committee on education, and um, but they are going into committee from next week. So uh, I'll come to your college, Joe. What is keeping you up at night? And uh, just use the opportunity to tell me what you find interesting that happened at the national conference this week. Um, well, um, what, what's keeping me up at night uh, is um, is that we. We, we Nigerians, we, although we are blaming the government, but we have both failed the, our country. So and, uh, just to correct the person that talked about our president not being intelligent, I don't think so, because we have a lot of intelligent people in this country. So it's, uh, if, 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 it's, if all of us come together, we can solve this issue, but we are not ready. So that is what's keeping me up at night. In the issue of uh, the conference, I, I, I don't... You, they, have, they have not given us final information. Like, this, this is what are they going to discuss? We don't know that, uh, who and who is in which committee. Because I don't want to favor some people to be in some committee to so bring up answers that will favor the present government. So that, those are the things that bother me about this committee. But I'm happy we're going into this committee. But I'm going to be optimistic about it and wait for the result. So that, that, that's what that's I have to say. All right. Yemi, what's keeping you up at night, and what happened this week at the national conference that you find in, or you found very interesting or hopeful that they will come up with something that will help the country? Yeah, um, thank you, Rudolph. Um, first of all, I just want to go back to what Anson said. We are not hundred percent sure if Boko Haram is caused by tribal or political driven, because that, it was is, the, that is the truth. Let, let me finish. Let me finish. You said your you talked. Let me talk. Now, uh, Boko Haram, when it started, we knew what's the meaning of Boko Haram. They are against Western religion. That was what they were fi fighting for. Western education. And because Western education. And because uh, their leader was killed maliciously, that's why they are revolting against the government. Everybody knew that. Obasanjo even went to plead against them. So we are not 100% sure if it's politically driven or if it's religiously driven or tribal driven. That's that. Now, what's keeping me up at night is... Um, I hope the security apparatus and the federal government will now sit up 
to prevent this reoccurrence of this bombing and killing of innocent people in Nigeria. It's so sad. We wake up in the morning and we just read the news. You see bodies of people dying like chickens. It's so sad. I hope this doesn't happen again. I pray it doesn't happen again. About the conference, um, a, a professor was at the conference and he s said something that everybody in the conference, they said he almost uh, turned the whole place upside down. He was talking about changing the name of Nigeria. The origin of the name was named by the girlfriend of Lord, Lord Lugard, that <laughs> Niger area, dark people, people of darkness, that we should change the name to University, uh, United uh, States of Shangguawa or something like that. <laughs> However, yeah, it, 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 it's a very good um, um, no, uh, observation, and I think it's something we should look into. But however, I don't believe in the conference because it came at a very short notice, and it, it, the intention of it is not to to make Nigeria better, but to uh, try and win the hearts of uh, uh, voters. That's that that's my comment. All right, thank you so much, uh, Michael. In India, what's keeping you up at night, and anything you found interesting at the conference this week? Yeah, thank you, Rudolph. Uh, what is keeping me up at night right now is. Uh, is the history of this woman that I read about that was beaten by a mobile police, and it's re it's really disheartening and uh, pathetic. And I can't really imagine the security forces doing this to our own people in our own country. And I mean, it's really, really horrible. You need to see the video if you haven't seen the video. Are you, However, uh, hold on, Michael. Hold on. Uh, I can't let you go. Are you saying that because there is a video and you were shocked, or you don't know that they were ha those things are uh, were happening every day in Nigeria? I, I, I know those things are happening every day in Nigeria. However, when you are reminded that these things are happening, you get your, your heart gets... Uh, all right, all right. You know. I wanted to be sure of that. Go ahead. <laughs> and, and, uh, I mean, it's, it's really a horrible scene. And, and, you know, when I saw the video, I saw a mod. I mean, the road were not even well constructed. And, you know, I feel like, well, that's my country. I can't even tell anybody I'm from there anyway from now. However... Um, but uh, about the national conference, I will tell you sincerely, since uh, the day I saw people sleeping there, I gave up hope. And there's nothing new. I, I don't believe in it any longer. I just believe that whatever comes out of it, well, all is up. All right. Uh, Abby, what's keeping you up at night? And oh, I love keeping me up at night. You know, well, especially when you, you know, when you are sleeping or you decide to go to, to check inside the night or check, maybe you read some. Parts of the paper. All you need, all you see there is a uh, bombing, killing, rape, ritualist aspect of it. Those are lots. Those are the things mostly keeping me at night. And uh, on the other part of it, the national conference aspect of it, I'll tell you, is a waste of fun. On that part, whereby. I looked at it that those people that were not empowered politically, this is their means for their, their avenue or their drive to, to benefit from the government. Mm. Those are a waste of fun. Look at the other man that was saying that they should change the name of the, the country. It's, that is not even the problem. The problem is they are not sincere to themselves. Mm. And lastly, last those money, the, the, the last part of it again is those money that they give to those, because that's why all of them want to go into politics. The money is too much. Mm. And the kind of cars they use, it is, it's, they are not supposed. Mm. If, they, if, if, Nigeria can start, if Nigeria can start producing a car, let them be using the car made in Nigeria, not the one they'll start going outside and, and start buying, because everybody wants to live big. And those things that they are using, at the end of the day, they will agree it. Mm. All right. That is all right, thank you so much. Uh, uh, Hansen, what's keeping you up at night? Rudolph, what is keeping me up at night is that PDP and the APC, they are playing politics with the blood of Nigerians. I agree. Okay? <laughs> they are busy thinking of 2015, why Nigerians are dying. Bugari is busy thinking of how to become president in 2015. Good luck is busy thinking of how to be, how to be re-elected in 2015. And a lot of Nigerians, poor Nigerians, are dying because they know well that they have a, a armored cars, they have a, a bulletproof, they have a lot of bodyguards that will protect them. Then other people are dying. So you say pity, and it's very shameful.
that something like that is happening in a country called Nigeria. I'm ashamed. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Hansen in Switzerland. Thank you for coming on our show. Thanks so much. Carly Joe in Canada, thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure, Udo. Yemi in Canada. Yemi, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Michael in India. Michael, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome, bro. And Abby in Texas. Abby, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that move over. And happy start to all of you, okay? Yeah. Udo, okay. Yeah. Udo, just one thing. I don't like the way we are not believing in this conference. Because the next time we'll come on this forum again after the conference, we'll, we'll be talking about Nigeria breaking up. And we'll be talking about calling for a conference. All right, we'll we discuss this next week. Join us again when we give you this chance to give us feedback on what we are showing to you every week. So stay tuned for more programs.